Mm-hmm. I lost my religion. And like Tamala Man said, I am all churched out. But let me explain why. What's going on, y'all? It's your boy Reese Johnson, aka Mr. Gas, and this is the Gutter and Saint Podcast. Man, I'm gonna need y'all to click that like button, that subscribe button, and that bell for notification to stay plugged in with me. I lost my religion when I found who Christ Jesus truly was out of the scriptures not this americanized version of jesus not this old patriotic uh fluffy all-inclusive type of jesus and all the other forms of jesus america and americans made up but the jesus who's truly in the scriptures i went on a deep-rooted spiritual journey into why i believed so much in christianity and In my conclusion, it was all based out of fear of going to hell, like most Christians. So I found that all my Christianity, I was being performative to to try to stay in the good graces of God and trying to watch my sinning and all that stuff. Now, it's good to watch yourself from from stand with standing from sinning and all that stuff, but it was more of out of fear of not going to hell and not out of, you know, the grace and the true love of God and why he won us in his kingdom. So real rap, I almost burnt myself out and walked away from the church entirely. And we have been seeing that lately. A lot of brothers and sisters have been walking away from the faith. And in my personal belief is because they burnt themselves out. Now, a lot of them say that they've been church heard and the these leaders, they done saw this leader do this. They done saw that worship leader do that. And they walked away. They, they call these people hypocrites. And I understand. But I need y'all to know this. If you walk away from the church, where are you going? The same hypocritical people that y'all see on those pulpits every day, you're going to find in the world too. Because they don't have no morals and no values. Now, I am not at all trying to excuse what those church leaders are doing. But... Just know this, the same God who's going to judge them for their nonsense and mess is going to judge you for your nonsense and mess. We are all hypocritical in some way, form or fashion, but it's all about correcting ourselves. Stop focusing on what they doing and focus on what you're doing for the Lord. But let me get back. A lot of us is performing to try to keep our salvation instead of resting in the finished work of Christ. We can't work for our salvation, y'all. Now, I am not saying stop living holy to your best ability, but what I am saying is stop being so hard on yourself. Romans chapter eight, verses one through four says, therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus for the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death for God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. If we focus more on bearing the fruit to the spirit rather than focusing on bearing the fruit to the flesh, we wouldn't be so weighed down by our sins and our shortcomings. We're going to sin. We're going to fall short, but it's about getting back up, repenting and getting back in the game. Recently, I saw an interview with Larry Live. He was interviewing um Leandra Johnson and um she said something very profound and um I think we should take a look at what she said. We were taught this by the people that came before us. Mm-hmm. So am I really mad at them or am I mad at those who taught them? Mm-hmm. To the system. So who am I mad at? It's the system. It's the system. system. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Fuck the religious system. (laughs) I'm sorry. I just had, can I get that out? I'm sorry. I I mean, come on. I mean, you know. Yeah. It, it, It needs to be on a shirt. Yeah. Hey, listen. She said what she said. Real rap. She said what she said. 
you might not like what she said or how she said it or how she delivered it, but um, she said what she said. And I understand a lot of people are walking away from the religious aspect of this whole Christianity. A lot of people is walking away, not because of Christ. They don't hate Christ. Now, well, I'm, I'm going to speak for myself. Like, I love Christ. My whole identity is based in Christ. But this religious system has tore it up, like, like you know, tore it up. So when I say I'm, I walked away, I didn't walk away from Christ. Listen, I remember in the scriptures, the Lord said to the religious folk of that day, you know, he said that they will they will cross sea and land to make a single proselyte twice as hell as they are. And that's what I see these leaders doing. They are leading a lot of people astray. Now, we see all the antics and all the stuff that they doing. But just because they are doing that, that doesn't nullify the, the power of the Bible. The power of the Bible, the power of the church still stands. And you got to remember in the book of Revelation, um, the first three chapters, chapter one, two and three. It talks Jesus talk about setting these those type of churches, you know, set, setting them straight. Now, there was two churches. I know the one was Philadelphia and I forget the other one um, that was, you know, that God was cool. The, the Lord was cool with, you know, that they was doing they was on the right path. One of them, the devil was trying to, you know was trying to do things with them and the other one the church of philadelphia they was they they was on the right path but the other five churches they was messed up so it makes sense to me now why the lord says that the path is narrow you know and broad is the road that leads to destruction because it's it you, you have a greater chance to falling into the wrong situation 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 than the right situation so that's why it's important that you get to know who christ jesus is study the life of christ that was my journey my journey was to study the life of christ get my get my get my eyes off of what other folk is doing and what they ain't doing and get my life right with christ and that's what Y'all need to be doing now in my personal journey. I believe God was telling me to live out of his love and grace and not out of his wrath. And I believe he's telling that to all of us. We work from our salvation. We don't work for our, our salvation. And that's where I'm at. I'm working from my salvation. So the scripture talks about how we don't grow, don't grow weary in doing good. So a lot of us grew weary in doing good, doing so much for the church and doing so much for this, that, and the third. We burnt ourselves out. We was looking at other people. We burnt ourselves out. But God said, don't grow weary in doing good. Work from your salvation and not work for your salvation. And like he told uh, Peter, I forget which disciple he told, but if I'm not mistaken, he told Peter. Peter said this in Matthew 19, 27. I, gotta, I, I just pulled the scripture up on my phone. So y'all be patient with me. Just, just ride with me. Just look, look at this right here. In Matthew 19, verses 27, 28, and 29, listen to what Jesus said to Peter. Well, Peter asked Jesus, says something to Jesus and Jesus, you know, answered him. He said, Peter said in reply, see, we have left everything and followed you. What then we will have? Jesus said to them, truly, I say to you in the new world, when the son of man will sit on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or fathers or mothers or children or lands for my name's sake will receive a hundredfold and will inherit eternal life. Verse 30. But many who are first will be last and the last first. When we stay focused on the Lord, there's a greater reward for us at the end. That's why I got my eyes off of what these folk are doing. I got out of the religious system, the organization, and I am clinging tight to Christ. So, yeah, we don't work for our salvation. We work from our salvation. Now, in other words, if, if you have a job, right, every time you clock in, 
you're you're going to work to fulfill your job duties that you got hired for. Now, you're not trying to work to keep your job unless you're one of those folk, you know, on their last write up and they got to try to work hard to try to keep their job. But it's not like us in the kingdom, us kingdom folk. We work for the Lord. Even when we fall short, you know, there is grace upon grace if we remain Humble. Now, if you're one of those people who's who don't care about their job and they just show up just because they are being paid, in other words, they are being blessed, then you know, sooner or later you're gonna be fired, if you know what I mean. Here in James um chapter four, verse six, it says, But he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but give grace to the humble. So remain humble, remain steadfast, stand your ground, stay focused on the Lord, and and the, the grace is going to be there. Now I have a question. How deep is your love for God? Are you willing to change and live according to his standards? Are you willing to obey his rules and, and, and his commands? Are you willing to be the radiance of God and Christ here on earth now? If you said, yeah, I'm going to need you to do this. I'm going to need you to take the time to sow a $25 seed so I can buy me a new pair of Gucci shoes and a Louis Vuitton belt and, and one of those big old rapper chains. You know what I mean? <laughs> nah, man, play me. It's, it's a joke. It's a joke. Like, I had to throw a little joke in there, man. Bear with me. But ain't that what the preachers say? Those, those, those false preachers who's always talking about money, they get the hooting and the hollering and they get y'all all rallied up. They get you jumping around and then they start talking about, well, sow a seed and you give this money. Ain't that what they do? But yo, check this out. Jesus said, if you love him, you'll obey his commands. Not twist them to appease your audience and your following, you know, to don't twist them to try to get people to sow into your ministry. But he said, if you love him, obey his commands. So when I say I lost my religion, I'm not saying I walked away from Christ Jesus. What I am saying, though, I walked away from all the church antics in Christianity. I walked away from all the nonsense. I walked away from all the hooting and the hollering and all the pandering. My whole identity is in Christ to glorify him, to radiate and reflect the power of God, of Christ through me and in this life that he gave me. So if you are a lot like me, don't be afraid to lose your religion, to follow Christ wholeheartedly.